Peter. Yeah. Melody or harmony? Um, Non-fidgety. That's all I'm thinking about. And I'm Peter Martin. And you're listening to the You'll Hear It podcast. Daily jazz advice coming at you. Now, what are you talking about non-fidgety, man? Well, I was going to propose that we have uh, a no-fidget contest today. I'm already winning. Look at that. Look what at you that. Saying? You're doing all this. But now I'm doing it because what do you, mean? you got me. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, this came out of we were talking. We we rarely take the time to watch the You'll Hear It podcast. Well, I don't know about it in your household. No, but we, we watch it with the family every single day. Oh, you do? You, you, <laughs> you tie the kids down to the sofa. Yeah. <laughs> watch Daddy <laughs> <laughs> while Mommy pukes. <laughs> no, I mean, I was noticing, and please let us know in the comments below uh, if you've noticed this as well. Maybe it's just a self-conscious thing. You know, when people like see themselves on TV, oh, I look fat, and everyone else is like, I didn't notice because you always look fat. You know? uh. <laughs> but I mean, it just seems like there's a lot of movement going on. Now, for those of you listening, which is the vast majority, I might say, yeah. I might add, we're, yeah, we're yeah. still very, we're, we're growing on the YouTubes, which is fun. And I think, uh, you know, uh, uh, we've got some some cool camera angles. The pod cave is... is the, falling apart. It's is actually falling, falling apart. apart. They're the, working on it tomorrow, I think. But the mustiness and the dilapidation level of the podcast is actually not apparent in the video for some reason. And I don't know if that's Andrew's editing or what. I don't know. This looks like a pro-level setup because of the great microphones. and. But, I mean, this is a piece of crap. I this mean, thing is falling yeah, down. Yeah, when you're in here, though, this <laughs> looks like a, a shack made under an overpass by the river. I mean, this thing is going to collapse on us at some point. At some point. And we will die in the pod game. Yeah. But yeah. until that day, we are here to give some daily jazz advice. Yeah. And um, Two unknown jazz musicians died yesterday <laughs> in a horrible podcasting accident. Man, is that what's going to be on our, to- our poppers? To- no, to- it's the headline for the next day. <laughs> okay. um, oh, yeah. on, the, on whoever takes over this podcast. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's funny, man. But uh, yeah, we're, we're going to make some improvements to the pod cave, even though fun. no one can see. We can see. We can see, yeah. And it does drive us. Yeah. A this is a bit. good sounding pod cave. I'm always getting compliments on that, folks listening on the, which we've done a lot of, you know, or I should say Andrew and, and others have done a lot of work to, to get it to that point. So that's a lot of fun. Do you, let me ask you a question. Yeah. Do you, when you're like writing music or practicing, do you pace around a bit when you're thinking? Because I'm um, a pacer. This is why I think I'm. We're both pacing. Yeah, like yeah. When I'm thinking, I like to move a little bit. Yeah, sometimes. But usually, writing, I'm like, I have to like force myself to get up off the piano at least once an hour because I will go several hours, which like physically it's just yeah. not good. I was doing it the other day and I was like, my wrist was cramping up, and it wasn't from. Pl- I mean, it was playing, going back and forth. I was going old school with a little pencil on paper, and uh, but yeah. So then I need to get up and pace around. Yeah, but I, I don't actually don't do it automatically enough. I mean, I walk I walk in circles around my living room all, yeah. all night long if I have to. Right. But well, there you go. Yeah, that's why I'm spinning in my chair right now. Yeah. So, so what are we talking about today? Today we got a speak pipe. This is from Alex, uh, Mr. Oh. Spaceman, one of our favorites. One of our uh, you'll hear premium you'll members. You'll hear premium members, and he has a question about melody. Let's take a listen. Hey Adam. Hey Peter. Mr. Spaceman again. Sticking with it. Listen, I'm not going to bother you with anything about parenting or any of that ilk. But I was wondering if you could expand your conversation on melody. Um, You've been talking about melody a lot on your most recent videos, and I was wondering if you could talk about how to use the melody in an improvisation, in a solo. And it would be really cool, and I don't know if YouTube would allow this, but maybe you could keep it podcast only, but it would be really cool if you could analyze a solo and lift all the fragments that reference the melody. Maybe not the notes directly, but maybe it's the melody, the melody's shape, the melody's rhythm, anything that references that backbone of the tune. Keeping it under a minute and 30. Curious to see what you do with this one. All right. Take care. Night and good luck. Bye. Ooh, whoa. Ooh, what? Little, good night and good luck, little, buddy. Little, little insider uh little insider words there. Thank you, Spaceman, as always, for the insightful uh and eloquent question. And um 
how to use melody uh, when improvising. You yeah, know? we've it talked about this we, yeah. in, in talking about improvising, but I don't think we focused on this specifically. Why? Because it's not important, right? No, actually, it's, actually it's, <laughs> I mean, all the episodes we've done, it is amazing how many super important things we haven't talked about, which is exciting to me. Yeah. It's a little bit shameful, yeah. but it's also exciting to know that we have these areas to, uh, to delve into. Um, I think that uh, if we were to look at sort of, you know, the top level of like how we even think about this, I think it's good to approach melody as something that is the, is is really the most important building block of improvisation always like and and you know we 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 t- we shy away from these absolutist kind of statements because that's really not our style usually mm. but i but i i'm not saying the only important and and, and maybe maybe you would d- disagree in terms of definitively the most important but i think if we expand our our kind of viewpoint on what melody could possibly be. It's not just, you know, clunking chords in the left hand and bebop lines in the right hand. That's just one use of melody. Yeah. But I mean, the fact that, you know, comping can be very melodic. For sure. Bass lines can be melodic. Bass root movements can be melodic. It has to be melodic. Drums can be melodic. For I mean, sure. all my favorite drummers, you know, Hurlin Riley, Greg Hutchinson, Brian Blade, Elvin Jones, I mean, Tony Williams. I mean, I, I always am hearing so many melodies in the way that they play, the way they solo, the way they play with melody. So, you know, to talk about how, I don't even want to like break it off too much to say how to effectively use melody. It's like, well, melody, rhythm, and harmony, we know these are basic building blocks, but melody, I think, has to take somewhat of a superior um, position when we look at improv conceptually. That's right. And I think a lot of, of chordal instruments, a lot of harmonic instruments like piano and guitar, we tend to not spend as much time as we probably should on the melody or you hear that with some players of like you said you know plopping down your left hand and then just playing a bunch of bebop language it's not necessarily uh the ideal way to to improvise melodic content if we go speaking of bebop language if we go to all of the greats charlie parker could play a melody so beautifully and with such uh shape yeah that that's why his bebop line sounded so great. And so I would suggest the like step one of this is actually spend spend time working on being able to play a melody that connects to the audience. Yeah. You know, be like pick a pick your favorite ballad. Try playing what's new on the piano mm. and making that sound like you're a horn player. You know, I mean that's a really uh, important skill that I think a lot of intermediate level pianists and guitarists especially really could use uh, some more time developing. We get so hung up on, you know, this scale and this, yeah. you know, uh, slick rhythm or, or whatever. But when you hear, you know, some of our, some of our favorite, I was just listening to um, a ballad, um, for, uh, forget the name of the ballad. It was Roy Hargrove and it was an original. Mm. It was a beautiful ballad. Mm. Yeah, he's got some great Oh, ones. man. I'm a space on it. Anyway, but I was just completely struck. You're going to space man on it. I'm going to space man on it. I was completely <laughs> struck by this great improviser, um, how how he just, he literally just like straight down the middle with the melody in the most beautiful big tone on the flugelhorn. And like, yeah. I mean, it was so, so, so beautiful. And it's so easy for us to, you know, to say, well, it's harder for a piano to play beautiful melody and tone and these things. Be Like when you bring up a beautiful flugelhorn, such a almost a vocal quality, you know, a lyrical quality to the tone of that instrument. But, and and, it, and the piano does have its difficulties in being able to get to that level. Um, but first of all, it's possible you you take Keith Jarrett, you know, pops to mind as someone who can play beautifully lyrical. Top level of that, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, and all his improvising sounds like beautiful melodies. I mean, very melodic, yeah, yeah. very melodic, very lyrical. But also like with a flugelhorn or something, when you hear Roy Hargrove play a beautiful melody, it's easy to be like, oh my God, that instrument is such a beautiful. Okay, put the, put, put that flugelhorn in a crappy trumpet player's hand yeah, and see really. how much you like. like totally. As beautiful as the consort, it can also go down to a point where that it's kind of hard on the piano to go down that far, maybe because of the, the tonal range possibilities and how difficult it is to excel to soar and to kind of flop down that's right uh yeah i was going to say some suggestions for pianists to listen to for great melodic playing i think keith jarrett is on the top of my list for this just because of the sound he can get and the control he has dynamically that he's bringing out the melody in such a beautiful way i also think like number two for me would be monk i think is 
probably one of the greatest melody players in the history of jazz. I totally agree, and, and I think a lot of people wouldn't think would, would would think that's counterintuitive, but I totally agree with that yeah. because the clarity. I mean, you know, you mentioned something earlier about practicing can, playing a melody in a way that you can connect with an audience, which is of course easier to do when you have experience of playing for different audiences and trying things out. Um, but it, but once you start to do that, you can practice that. But to me, a lot of that is simplicity and clarity of the line. Nobody was better than Monk at that. And that, uh, you know, stylistically, we might think of his style very different, which it is, his mm. pianistic style than Keith Jarrett. But they really share that ability to clearly and confidently, you know, from, from a pianist standpoint, express a melody and just play it and just let it. And I mean, we're always joking about Keith Jarrett, the master of the triad, but that's because he's playing, you know, obviously he can do a lot more than that, but he's confident to just play a triad and a beautiful melody and let his lyricism and the clarity of his melody no really doubt. shine. No doubt. I think third down for me, and this might be a kind of an obscure choice, but Bill Sharlap, I think, is one mm. of the most melodic um, voicing players. And, and by voicing, I don't mean... Right, right. Voicings. I mean, the way he's able to voice yep. his chords under the melodies is so, so gorgeous. So Absolutely. I would, Alex, check out any of those pianists. Um, I would throw one more in there, and we didn't plan this list, so this is this is fun. It's kind of off the cuff, but George Shearing, who's not somebody I listen to a whole Definitely. lot, but he kind of pops to mind from, obviously, from a chordal standpoint. Yeah. And us always not just thinking about melodies as a single line thing. And of course, it kind of became the shearing style that everybody apes. But really, his ability, and a lot of it was from what you just mentioned, voicing, yep. being able to voice out the particular notes. And um, well, we saw that, you know, the there's a great, maybe we'll link to that below, the Glenn Zaleski yep. video about voicing, where That's he right. talks about what well, we thought he was going to talk about voicings, but he's talking about voicing. I think he really explains it nicely there. Glenn nails it. That, yep. Actually, Glenn's a great melody player as well yep. for that reason. Yep. Um, so how do we get this in our improvising? I mean, Alex, have you tried improvising around the melody? Like, we're not going to do anything well unless we put it to our practice routine. Yep. So. You know, this should be part of your regular practice is to practice improvising with the melody of the tune. Yeah. It's like it's kind of, you know, the, the level two of when you're learning a new tune and you're practicing it. Like level two is not to go immediately into like as many scale running exercises as you can do over the changes. It's really to get to know the melody in such a sense that you can improvise around it and come back to it and play with it and then start scale running and everything after that and getting to know the changes. But really that melody has to be super strong before you're going to be a strong improviser on the tune. Yeah. And I think that, you know, one of the simplest, most obvious and, and probably most known ways to approach that is, you know, in your practice routine is melody and variations, mm. you know, where you're always keeping, the, you, you know, there's so many different levels that we can practice with it all the way up to like the melody's only in your head and you're playing something that sounds like it has nothing to do with it, but you're hearing it, you yep. know, that's kind of level 99 or whatever, but just playing the melody and then phrasing the melody, but then playing the, mary, the melody with slight variations mm. is, is a very basic way um, but we want to do things in a basic way to really get this as part of our playing. So that's, I think, a great thing for any type of style, really bebop, ballad. I mean, really anything that you're going to improvise. Totally on. true. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you, Alex, for the speak pipe. Yes, sir. If someone wanted to leave us a voice message like Alex did. Oh, man, they could just do it as long as they're You'll Hear Premium you members. you got to be a premium uh -huh. member. Go to youllhear.com to check out all the benefits of premium membership. You know who our newest You'll Hear Premium member is? Who? Andrew Kitchen, our producer. What? Yeah, he signed himself up, I noticed recently. Is that true? Did you pay for that, Andrew? No, he didn't pay for it. No, no he didn't. Okay, I, I thought he was. Okay, I got excited good. there, right? He looked interested, though, man. That's, you got to hype it up, man. <laughs> well, it's a, it's an easy way you could support the podcast. We love this, doing this every day, and it's a great way for it to, to keep going. And then you also get a bunch of cool benefits, so go check that out. You'll hear yeah, and this month we have, what's what's the video for this month? Have we put it up yet, or is it coming? Yeah, we just recorded some new premium episodes over the piano the other day. We yeah. have seven hip ways to get where you're going is up right now. That's some this nice, month. Yeah, like, that was slick. fun turnarounds and ways to re I used that for my some some GPS directions uh last week it worked well to get out to West County <laughs> That's too crazy seven hip ways yeah Cool. Well, um, as always, we're sponsored by Open Studio Network. Check that out. Our latest course, Lead Sheet Breakdown, is especially good for pianists. I was asking the other day, did you think it was applicable to anything beyond pianists? 
Yeah, I think so. Okay. I think so. I mean, because the basic voicings are so universal, even yep. for horn players or bass players, you're going to learn a little bit of basic piano when you do this. And this is part of our brand new series. It's volume one of our brand new series, uh, Jazz Piano Basics. Yeah. So check that out and all of our other offerings when you get a chance. Volume two is coming in October, Left Hand Voicings. Ooh, that'd yeah. be nice. Yeah. be nice. Yeah, yeah. Get your voicings on. That's right. All right. Well, till tomorrow. You'll hear it.